Hi, I want to talk to you all about parent and caregiver stress. Right now we are at really high levels of stress. There's a lot going on. We're in the middle of a global health pandemic. There's racial injustice. We have natural disasters and an election is right around the corner. So wherever you stand, I'm sure you're feeling some additional stress these days. And I want to talk about what that looks like when we're working with children. So we all have things that our children do, whether they're in our classroom or in our home, that drive us nuts or push our buttons. So one of the things that we can do is think about what are our hot buttons? What are those behaviors that drive us nuts, that make us really frustrated and irate? Um, and, and get to know what those are so that we can anticipate when that's going to happen. We can think about what is our response going to be when this behavior happens? Um, how am I going to keep myself calm? How am I going to support the child in the moment? Um, for me, one of my biggest hot button behaviors is whining. And right now, Emmett does a lot of whining around getting dressed in the morning. So for me, being prepared for this is a time when there's probably going to be some whining, um, be able to go into the situation and have a little bit more patience because I can anticipate it. I can also, um, you know, make sure I'm taking some deep breaths. I think that's one of the things too in the moment is thinking about, okay, what are the strategies that you're going to do to remain calm? Um, because when you are calm, it's easier for children to stay calm. Um, once you've, you know, flipped your lid or you're upset, um, the child's going to get upset as well. I, I love the definition of challenging behavior in that behavior is defined by the person who's most bothered by it. That helps me remember that, oh, Emmett's not bothered by this whining. He's trying to communicate something to me. I'm bothered by the whining, so then I need to uh, make some adjustments on my end to better meet his needs. So for me, I find it really helpful to take deep breaths. Um, and... Um, sometimes pause and give some wait time for Emmett when I'm giving him a direction that I, that he might respond to with whining. Um, I also definitely tag in uh, my husband to help out as well when there's times where I just feel like I'm at the uh, end of my rope and he can remain calm. And then after Emmett's done some whining behaviors, um, I try to think about you know, if I'm seeing patterns, right, like if it's oftentimes around getting dressed in the morning, then I want to think about what are some of the strategies I can use to prevent or decrease some of the whining. Um, so something that I found really helpful lately has been to give him, you know, with getting dressed, give him a five minute warning before it's time to get dressed. Um, and then, you know, give him some choices. Do you want to pick out your clothes or do you want me to pick out your clothes? Um, and then after I give him the direction of, okay, it's time to get dressed, then um, I step back and give him space to process my direction and to start getting dressed. And the second he starts, you know, um, you know, taking off his PJs or putting on his first, you know, article of clothing, then I try to give him that positive feedback um, of, wow, thanks for getting dressed or, um, you know, wow, you got dressed so fast today. That was awesome. Or you're ready to go have some breakfast. Um, if he's really starting to um, whine and flop and, um, you know, without strategies, it can turn into full on tantrum. Um, but if we're getting to that point where his behavior is increasing a little bit, then I, you know, could think about other strategies of distracting him, talking about what he wants to have for breakfast or telling him a story um, while he's doing the activity. I think the thing that's most important for all of us to keep in mind right now is that um, we need to be taking care of ourselves. This is a time when self-care is really important. I love this graphic of we can't pour from an empty vessel, and it's so true. We can't help children um, stay calm and engage in positive behavior if we can't do the same for ourselves. Um, so then it's thinking about what are those self-care plans for yourself right now, and um, maybe it's time, you know, we've been in a pandemic. A lot of us are at home right now and um, life is looking anything but normal. And this might be another time to say, hey, are my self-care strategies working? And if not, let's revisit what those are going to be and working with those in your support network, your family, your friends um, to help shape that self-care plan can be really crucial. So thinking about your physical needs, your sleep, your 
eating habits, your your exercise. Think about those social needs. Um, what does social needs look like for you? What is going to sustain you? How can you safely have um, social interactions and connections with those in your life? Thinking about your mental health needs, um, keeping your your brain sharp and getting you know giving it some challenges now and again. Um, also knowing when it's time to reach out for help to talk to somebody, whether that is a somebody close to you, a friend or family member, or whether that's um, a therapist or a trained professional. I'm um, thinking about your emotional needs, right? Talking to people in your life, um, finding appropriate ways to express your emotions, to feel them, um, whether that means, you know, through exercise or journaling or drawing or listening to music or, um, you know, spending time meditating, all of those pieces, um, you need to pick what's going to work best for you. And then the last thing to think about too is um, your spiritual needs. And that doesn't have to be religious, but it certainly can be. But thinking about um, what is it that gives you a sense of purpose in life and also connects you with the broader world. So I just want to say to all of you out there, I know you're working really hard. I know life is really challenging right now, um, but you've got this. Uh, make sure that you've got plans for taking care of yourself, for addressing those hot button behaviors, whether it's with your own children or with a classroom of children. Uh, there's lots of resources out there, um, lots of people who can um, help you and kind of think, help you think about your self-care plans. So be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and take care of yourself and be well. <music>